I crossed the channel as I usually do by the very efficient car ferry from Southampton to Le Havre. And as we approached the French coast, the tricolour was run up. And the kindly Norwegian master, Captain Muller, invited me to join him on his bridge and watch him bring the ship in. The French have done a wonderful job of rebuilding at Le Havre, for this port was very badly knocked about indeed during the last war. Well, although there'd been a force eight gale during the night, we docked bang on time. And about 80 miles to the east, near the great city of Rouen, is the tiny Norman village of Ri, where I made my headquarters. stands on a little river called the Crevon, which is itself a tributary of the river I'd come to fish, the river Ondel. The Ondel itself is a direct tributary of the Seine. And I offloaded my bags at the little inn where I normally stay during my fishing visits to this part of Normandy. The Crevon, I was a little disappointed to see, was beginning to get rather discoloured and I wasn't at all certain what I would find when I got to the Ondel a few miles away. The Ondel is a chalk stream and normally flows crystal clear like our chalk streams in Wiltshire and Hampshire. But on this day it was very dark and wet and it looked as though they'd had uh, rain earlier in the week. However, the river itself wasn't too bad, not exactly crystal clear, but certainly fishable. And quite early in the morning, the fish were rising. Now, this water is preserved by my very good friend, Dr. Yves Jean-Marie Marcel Rameau, with whom, as many of you know, I have fished in very many rivers, both in this country and in Europe. And usually, at this time of the year, I go across to Normandy to join him on one of his waters for the mayfly season. This year, I'm afraid, the mayfly was very late in Normandy. But that didn't stop us enjoying some good sport. For small flies were hatching, the trout were rising, and it wasn't very long before my first fish came to the bank. We very rarely kill a trout here in Normandy. We've come for the sport. And with the uh, quickest expedition possible, I wet my hand, release the trout unharmed. The Normandy cattle here are very typical. And in this lush grass, they produce about six gallons of milk a day, full of that cream, which is the very foundation of Norman cooking. Now, as the morning went by, so the rain got worse, and I was beginning to wish I had something to cover my head, something of the sort the doctor was wearing, a sort of monkish cowl, because by this time the water was beginning to get down my neck, and the doctor's wet hands caused that trout to jump clean from them. He wasn't, in fact, throwing it into the river. No more gentle fellow could be imagined. Well, it came lunchtime and the rain by now was very heavy indeed and it's not easy to have a picnic in these sort of conditions even the swallows seem to be getting rather fed up with it though these wet conditions very often produce a very good hatch of fly which suits both them and us we decided to make the best of a bad job and eat our picnic standing up getting what shelter we could from the cider apple trees which are such a feature of this part of Normandy, the Normandy cattle again, typical spectacle markings around the eyes. The Norman herd book was started in 1883, and the cattle can't qualify for that herd book unless they've got those typical marks around the eyes. And all through our uh, rather damp luncheon period, 
the flies continued to hatch and the birds were down on the water. That's what the fly fisher likes to see. And the doctor finishing his lunch with a good wedge of camembert, which of course is produced here in Normandy. The flies hatching this day were blue-winged olives, and it is a fact that when blue-winged olives are on the water and trout take them, they are generally pretty easy to catch. And so we were expectant of even better sport after lunch. Always provided the water didn't discolour too much. Well, no, it was the turn of my host, Dr. Eve Rammel, and he is acknowledged to be one of the best fly fishers in all France, as I think you will see for yourselves now. Already he's made contact with his first fish, and this one proved to be a very lively one indeed. We were fishing on this day at a place called Moorville, which is fairly high up the river on Dell, and the trout there don't run as heavy as they do lower down, but nevertheless, they are very beautiful and strong fish. This one, probably just under a pound. Sometimes you get them rather bigger than that. I remember when I was there a year ago, I had nine the first day, all more or less about a pound weight, which is a very handy size for wild brown trout. And when Ramo fishes, he does so with the most tremendous panache and enthusiasm. And there's something infectious about this. I find when I'm fishing with him that we always seem to get the most tremendous fun out of the game. And once again, he is taking his fish at the very first cast. The rain had got very bad by this time, and the river was rising and beginning to pick up quite a lot of old rubbish, leaves and things like that from along the banks. Nice fish now, close on a pound and a half in weight. And in these sort of conditions, when the river gets dirty and messy, there's a danger that the fishing may suffer. In fact, what happened was the fish stopped rising altogether, although the flies continued to hatch. They sickened, I suppose, by that rather dirty water. And then, as by a miracle, the sun came out really hot and we were able to get rid of some of our sodden things and hang them up to dry. Well, I had little hope of the fishing improving as a result of this change in the weather. But there were things to be seen by the waterside. I hoped to catch a glimpse of a muskrat and I got a very close view of a typical Norman bull. And again, you'll see those characteristic spectacle marks around the eyes. I wasn't taking too many chances with this chap. In the heat of the afternoon, a few mayflies did hatch, but although we watched them for a long time, we never saw one taken by a fish. So as a mayfly expedition, this didn't come off. Next morning, I made ready to leave the village of Ri for my next port of call in Anjou. But before leaving the inn, I went and had a last look at the little river Crevant, where there's a statue of a boy fishing in the river. And there I was delighted to get what must be the very best view I've ever had of a muskrat, an animal we don't have here, and it's very nearly as big as a cat. And I'll leave you now with a wonderfully detailed view of this little mammal. You need three.